Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Habiba Islam. Welcome to our annual Veterans Day ceremony. During these unprecedented times, this year our ceremony will be held a little different. Unfortunately, we couldn't hold the event in person. Nevertheless, our veterans will be honored regardless of the situation. Therefore, this year we will be honoring our veterans safely through the form of video. On Veterans Day, we take a moment to remember and honor the men and women who have served in our armed forces. People who have served this proud country for everything it stands for. A holiday that would honor all veterans from every war and conflict the United States has encountered. We have honored our troops and their service and their sacrifice. We have come together not as members of the Panther Battalion, the school, the city, nor the state, but as citizens of the United States of America, as Americans. To those who once wore the uniform of our Army, Air Force, Marines, Navy, or Coast Guard, we owe them our respect for the sacrifices they have made on the battlefield and at home. To remember their achievements, courage, dedication, and to say thank you for what they have done for our country. Thinking of you who will join us here today and those who are only here in spirit. A person can't help but feel awed by the enormity of what you have encountered. We stand in the midst of patriots and the family and friends of those who have nobly served. Not only do we honor our veterans, but we also respect all of the family members of our veterans. We know you have lived through difficult times and have made great sacrifice, often taking the heavy load of keeping the home fires burning. I am aware it is easy to say some things in this world are worth risking your life for, because I've never experienced being on that battlefield. It is easy for me to say thank you, but there will never be enough words to suffice the amount of sacrifice you and your family have done for the freedom of our country. From the bottom of our hearts, we sincerely thank you for the support. And now a few remarks from our Vice Principal, Mrs. Clarissa Howry. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am thankful to be in attendance among our honored veterans and their loved ones. These special events do not plan themselves. Therefore, I would like to begin by taking this opportunity to thank Sergeant Diles and Sergeant Pruitt for their service to our country and their commitment to our students. Additionally, I would like to express pride in our Centerline High School JRTC cadets for their dedication and hard work to make this Veterans Day presentation a success. Our JRTC program offers our students the opportunity to develop their leadership skills as they navigate school and relationships. Life is about choices and how we respond during challenges. Each image we see of our soldiers, Coast Guardsmen, sailors, airmen, and Marines that we honor today represent someone who has made a choice, no matter which era their common mission was and is to support the def and defend the Constitution of these United States of America. I encourage each and every one of you to find an opportunity to continue this legacy of service. Once again, I would like to thank our veterans for their commitment to serving our country. Hello, I'm Cadet Major Tazan Parvin, and I'm the Executive Officer of the Panther Battalion. The service members we honor today come from all walks of life, yet share several fundamental qualities. They possess the qualities of courage, pride, determination, selflessness, dedication to duty, and integrity, all of which are needed to serve a purpose beyond themselves. Several of these heroes did not ask to leave their homes to fight or serve on distant battlefields. Some didn't even volunteer and maybe even dislike the thought of fighting, yet stepped forward with bravery. They were ordinary day people who responded in remarkable ways when their country needed them. They rose to the nation's call because they wanted to protect and fight for the country that did a lot for them. American men and women have been answering the nation's call to duty. Millions of Americans have fought hard and died on battlefields either in their home country or even abroad to defend our nation's freedoms and way of life. Today our troops continue to make ultimate sacrifices and even as we lose troops, more Americans step forward and say, I am ready to serve. They follow in the footsteps of generations of fine Americans. Veterans Day, originally called Armistice Day, was initially designated as a day to celebrate the end of World War I. The First World War I ended on November 11, 1918, and the legislation that created Veterans Day 
was, and I quote, dedicated to the cause of world peace and to be therefore celebrated and known as Armistice Day. Wednesday, November 11, 2020, people throughout the country will gather together to remember, to honor, and to pay gratitude to those who have served our country. Our gathering is just a small spark in a flame of pride that burns across the nation. It's not a lot, but it is a small way that we can honor those who have made the ultimate sacrifice so that we can live in peace and freedom. Your presence here today and that of people gathering all across America is a tribute to those lost troops and their families. Since the first shots at Lexington and Concord were fired and our Revolutionary War began, American men and women have been answering our country's call for duty. We remember and honor them all. I will now be followed by my S5 Public Affairs Officer. Thank you, Executive Officer. Hello, my name is Cadet Captain Nisha Tasnim, the Public Affairs Officer. At this time, we would like to take roll call. Our roll call is used to recognize and honor the men and women who have served our country. Before I begin, I would like to sincerely apologize for mispronouncing any of these names. Charge it to my tongue and not my heart. Corporal Dennis Brzezowski, U.S. Marine Corps, related to centerline student Peyton Brzezowski. Staff Sergeant Michael Matter, U.S. Navy and U.S. Army, related to CL student Brooke Herrick. Specialist Dixon William, U.S. Army, grandfather of CTE cadet Samantha Meldrum. Sergeant Arthur Ruchinski III, U.S. Army, engaged to Mrs. Bywalik. Corporal Ed Curry, U.S. Marines, friend of Mrs. Bywalik. Private First Class Tyler Wright, U.S. Army National Guard, alumni of JRTC. Petty Officer, Second Class John Schultz, U.S. Navy, related to JRTC Cadet Jonathan Schultz. Private First Class Ryan Miner, U.S. Army National Guard, former centerline student. Specialist Alexis Flowers, U.S. Army, former centerline student. Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Walcrush, U.S. Army, current sub at CL. Sergeant First Class Marvin Diles, U.S. Army, senior Army instructor. Staff Sergeant Horace Pruitt, U.S. Army, Army instructor. Lieutenant Ron Howry, U.S. Navy, Husband of our assistant principal, Mrs. Howry. Specialist David Falconer, U.S. Army, English teacher here at CL. Private First Class Malin Vale, U.S. Army, related to JRTC Cadet Corporal Vale. Specialist Trevor Oviat, U.S. Army, relative of former cadet, now Private First Class Ryan Miner. Corporal Daniel Kremhelmer, U.S. Marines, father of JRTC cadet Madeline Kremhelmer. Corporal Richard Sitchik, U.S. Army, uncle of CL Hall Monitor O.J. Sergeant First Class Keith Laird, U.S. Army, relative of cadet Roy Salazar. Sergeant Mike Politovics, U.S. Marine, friend of Mrs. Bywalik. Sergeant Matt Rajd, U.S. Marines, friend of Mrs. Bywalik. Captain C. Ben Heverington, U.S. Marines, friend of Ms. Biwalik. Private George Serafin, U.S. Army, grandfather of former JRTC cadet Ryan Serafin. Master Chief Petty Officer Timothy Malak, U.S. Navy, uncle of former Battalion Commander Jessup Moreland. Commander Sergeant Major Robert J. Sullivan, U.S. Army, grandfather of CL student Chris Simons. Sergeant Bruce Falls, U.S. Army, relative of CL student Cody Ryan. Sergeant Gary Teal, U.S. Army. Private Tyrone Jones, U.S. Navy. Sergeant First Class Brent Bajenski, U.S. Army, uncle of JRTC Cadet Elijah Podeski. Marvin Akari, U.S. Navy, great-grandfather of Elijah Podeski. Private First Class Malvin Lawsey, U.S. Army. Seaman First Class George Bajinski, U.S. Navy, great-grandfather of JRTC Cadet Elijah Podeski. Private First Class Ryan McOley, U.S. Army, 
father of JRTC cadet Alana Oli. Specialist Scott Gooley, U.S. Army. Specialist Roger Ingram, U.S. Army. Specialist Larry L. Moore, U.S. Army. Thank you for your service. We have awarded medals to many soldiers, added their names to monuments, and named buildings for them to honor them for their bravery. But nothing can replace the hole left behind by a fallen service member, and no number of medals and ribbons can comfort the ones that made the ultimate sacrifice. Those individuals are Private John Kotek, U.S. Navy, father of Mrs. Cook, Sergeant First Class Mike Serafin, U.S. Army, great uncle of former cadet Ryan Serafin, John McKay, U.S. Army, grandfather of Mrs. Cook. At this time, let us have a moment of silence. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I now welcome back our battalion commander. Thank you for taking the time to honor our veterans in a unique way this year. Even during this unpredictable time, we are honored to help showcase the incredible people that have fought for the freedom of our country. Thank you for all being a part of this noble event, and thank you for our staff for supporting us and being a part of the ceremony. God bless you, your families, the troops, and America. Again, thank you for your service.